What does Prince William and Taylor Swift's friendship really mean? Can anyone tell Princess Anne to slow down? And will Harry and Meghan's latest trick have them in the pink again? We'll answer all those and more in another fascinating show. Welcome to Palace Confidential, I'm Jo Elvin and on my panel today is the Daily Mail's Royal Editor Rebecca English and the paper's Diary Editor and online heartthrob, <laughs> it says here, not my words, Richard Eden. Welcome to you both, How my, my you dear friend. Richard? <laughs> <laughs> now a reminder if you don't already, please do join our ranks of subscribers here on the Daily Mail's Royal Channel. Click that button and never miss another episode of your favourite Royal show. Okay, let's get started. And a bit of a change this week, because usually the Princess Anne section of the show goes at the end of the program, as our loyal viewers will know. But this week, after some alarming news about the Princess Royal, it's only right that we start with her. Rebecca, what on earth has been going on? And how is Princess Anne now? Well, I'm not going to lie. I got a message on Monday just to say, heads up, there's going to be a statement about the Princess Royal coming out imminently. Nothing else. And my stomach did a flip-flop, I'm not going to lie, especially after this last year, because there are any other oh. two other times I've had a similar heads up this year. Um, and uh, yeah, it was I couldn't think what on earth it would be. So we were pretty shocked to find out that she had been involved in an incident um, at her Gatcombe Park estate on Sunday night. She was out walking about 9.15, lovely summer's evening in the UK. And uh, it looks like she was either struck by the head or the legs of a horse. And I say looks like, we don't know because she suffered terrible concussion and minor head injuries and can't actually remember what led up to the incident. But what we do know is that she did receive emergency treatment on the estate on the night and it was deemed necessary to rush her to hospital by ambulance uh, to Bristol, which is about 45 minutes drive away from her, but it is a major trauma. Uh, response centre and does have uh, neuro specialists there, and she remains there as as you know today is when we're filming the program. I, I feel slightly like it's my fault. I do remember last week saying what person or beast would mess with Princess Anne, and here we are. I mean, horses are scary; they yeah. really are. Uh, Richard, it's been pointed out though that this isn't Anne's first visit to hospital, and she's not massively known as a very patient patient. <laughs> no, I mean she was involved in a very serious um, accident involving a horse before where she came off her horse while riding and the horse um, fell on top of her. Oh. Um, she had a sort of hairline fracture of a vertebrae I think and again she was concussed. But um, in a sign of how strong she is, this was the year, I think 1976, when she then went on to compete at the Montreal Olympics in Canada. Mm. Um, but obviously that's a long, long time ago and concussion, as you get older, she's in her 70s now, of course it's being taken very seriously, so it is worrying. But yes, there have been reports about when she's been in hospital before and she has, um, you know, not wants any nonsense, she's just, you know, let's get on with it type of thing. Um, but we've seen her, her husband, Tim Lawrence, visiting her twice, Sarah visiting. Um, so we know it's serious. Oh God, I hope she's all right though. I mean, on, my, on a light, more kind of slightly light-hearted note, what I did love is when Tim Lawrence visited her for, on the first occasion, he was carrying this kind of blue plastic cool box, the kind of thing that we've all got shoved away at the back of one of our cupboards somewhere. And when he was asked, he said, oh, it's just a few treats from home. And I just love the fact that Princess Anne is having a lunch, basically, bought in a, in a normal cool box to the hospital like any of us would. Well, come on, yeah, hospital food can be quite yeah, boring. Yeah, what do you think's so, in there? Nice it's... Kit Kat crunchy? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And of course it's worth pointing out she's in an NHS hospital, which is a, effectively a state hospital here. So it's not a kind of big fancy private facility, there's no major security there. She really is there as uh, pretty much as a another patient. So. And what news of another recuperating royal, our Princess of Wales, Catherine? Well obviously, as we know, she's still undergoing this preventative uh, chemotherapy, she told us herself a couple of weeks ago, and she has said that she would dip into possibly if she was feeling up to it a few engagements over the coming weeks before the summer break. We've got Wimbledon coming up for the next two weeks starting on Monday. Big event, she's obviously patron of the All England uh, Lawn Tennis Club and I think the mood music is at the moment that we 
probably got a very good chance of seeing her at some point in the next two weeks. But you know, when I've discussed this with the Paris, they said nothing's confirmed because of course as she herself said is I've, I've, I'm having good days and bad days and you know, I, she'll have to see how she feels I think nearer the time. I think we've learnt that your hunch rate is pretty successful though on this show, <laughs> haven't we? What do you think? Well, what do, you, what do we think, think Richard? I mean, Wimbledon's a great engagement yeah. to go to because yes, essentially she's only got to go there and watch the tennis so even if she's not feeling 100% it's a nice thing to do isn't mm. it so oh, we um, love Wimbledon let's oh, hope we see her not there. going this year heartbroken mm -hmm. um, now both Catherine and and obviously would have been very much missed at the celebrations for the Japanese state visit uh, the highlight being a huge banquet at Buckingham Palace what can you tell us about that Rebecca yeah, so I was covering this, the whole Japanese state visit on, on Tuesday from the big ceremonial welcome at Horse Guards, uh, you know, which was under, I think, one of the hottest days, you know, we've seen in the UK this year. There's 1,200 soldiers all kind of in bearskins and lifeguard uniforms. Nobody fainted, unbelievably. And then uh, there was a lunch at Buckingham Palace, a look at a beautiful display of uh, Japanese artefacts from the Royal Collection. And in the evening, we had this... Um, magnificent state banquet. Now, one of the perks of my jobs is not to actually eat at the state banquet. I've never done that, and thank God, because when you see the seating places, I mean, I wouldn't even know, know where to start on those knives and forks. Um, but I do get to have a sneak peek of the table uh, before the guests come in, and you kind of go around and look at the seating plans. Um, I wish, I mean, we can see some pictures and footage of it, but I wish you could experience what it smelt like. The flower displays, which were all, seasonal flowers and there were roses just cut that day from the garden at Buckingham Palace and Windsor. I mean, they were exquisite. The, the, the scent in that ballroom was just unbelievable and all the best china out. Uh, the seating plan was, was, was fascinating. And you have at the top table, you know, the king, the queen, you had the emperor and the empress, the, the Prince of Wales, who was playing a big part in this state visit. But also actually what I thought was lovely was the Duchess of Edinburgh was on the top table. And that, I think that's one of the first times I can remember her being there. I mean, obviously, Princess Anne would have been there if she could have been. Uh, so the kind of I suppose the Duchess was promoted in her in her as a replacement, but it was a lovely touch to see her there as well. And Richard, you have a fascinating story about one royal guest at the dinner, don't you? Yes, this was um, because, as Rebecca mentioned, we only had a, a few senior royals there with the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh, Duke and Duchess of Gloucester, Prince of Wales, the King and Queen, but there was also a um, young royal um, who is Sam Chatto. Now he is the grandson of Princess Margaret. Um, he's the son of Lady Sarah Chateau and Daniel Chateau. Mm -hmm. And he managed to wangle an invitation. <laughs> so obviously everyone was wondering, you know, how on earth did, was he invited? Um, but the reason is because of the Japanese connection. Um, he spent much of last year, he's an artist, a ceramicist, and he spent much of last year um, in Japan being taught by a, a sort of grandmaster of Japanese ceramics mm. and I think the king and queen thought it would be a lovely touch because of his Japanese interest to invite him along so um, I'm, I'm sure he enjoyed it and it was quite a thoughtful touch to have him there. Lovely well Rebecca also on display was the new family order what what even is that what, what does it mean? Yeah I was pretty sure it was going to come out on on Tuesday um, because it's been it's been long in the making. So every sovereign gives female members of their family a hand-painted portrait, surrounded by diamonds, as you do, uh, to wear on state evening occasions. Now, obviously, the king exceeded the throne 18 months ago, coronation a year ago, but we still haven't seen the family orders. So there's been a lot of expectation about this. Uh, queen Camilla was the first female royal to wear it. And um, I think a very interesting fact about it is traditionally these have been painted on, hand painted on ivory by very talented miniaturists. Obviously that's not acceptable nowadays. So uh, the king chose polymin, which is a very kind of malleable uh, plastic, but it, it kind of has the appearance of, of kind of ivory, so it still has the same effect. Plastic? Yes, it's a plastic, yeah. Mm. Um, but it still has the same effect, but it's obviously a, a more palatable. 
uh, medium to use nowadays. Um, the diamonds, uh, and this did make a few of us laugh on the time because it was, it was explained to us there's 10 carats of diamonds surrounding it and they're just loose diamonds from the existing collection in the Royal Collection that we were kind of joking about, kind of rooting under the, the cushions to see if you could find the odd spare diamond to put on. Well, next time you're there, do that, yeah, you might exactly. find one. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, it was enamelled and there was kind of gold um, accoutrements on it, again taken from existing gold in the Royal Collection and hung from a, uh, a blue ribbon which was specially chosen by the King because his grandfather had a blue ribbon and the ribbon was made by the milliner Philip Tracy who is Queen Camilla's favourite hat maker. Um, so very niche. There's a but, lot going on there. Very niche but um, you know a royal must. But what I'd like to know is have the other women in the royal family also been given it? Is that, it, is that tradition? Well yes. it would appear not. So in 1952 um, Queen Elizabeth made sure that all the um, women in the royal family were given the royal order. But in this case we've only heard about Queen Camilla. So you know has Catherine been given one? Has have Sophie? Certainly Sophie was not wearing one no, or the Duchess of Gloucester was not wearing one. So Is it, that a question that the palace would answer? Well, I'm waiting for an answer on it, actually. I right. mean, I suspect it's because it's taken a while for them to do and they'll, they'll roll it out in time. But you're right, Queen Elizabeth, you know, did give us out in one go. But I suppose they'd argue they've had a lot on their plate with, you know, hitting the ground running, coronation, state visits, and then obviously the King's illness. Maybe mm. they just haven't had time to do them. I don't know. Yeah. Well, they're still looking for a few more diamonds under the cushion. <laughs> well, indeed, and they'll, they'll find them, I'm sure. So, Richard, no room for your favourites, Beatrice and Eugenia the royal banquet, but a piece in Vanity Fair this week does quote a royal source as saying that Charles thinks they have grown into very sensible young women who could be a real asset and that using them more is something that's being considered. Presumably that's singing your tune. <laughs> um, yes, I mean, they, they haven't taken part in any of the, the state visit events, but Princess Beatrice um, this week, while William was attending an event, she um, attended a charity event connected with the Earthshot Prize which is the environmental prize that William founded. It was a round table event involving um, water, water supply, and she was there sort of in, in William's absence. So I think we can see some significance from that, um, you know, and it could be uh, um, something to watch in the future. Indeed. Now, Rebecca, before the pomp and pageantry of this Japanese state visit came, the news that the King's own travel plans are being cut short? Yeah, I mean, this is still a work in progress, but he, he had been always due to attend the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Samoa in the autumn. Um, obviously, that was a question mark over it because of his ongoing cancer treatment. He was also hoping to uh, plan uh, a trip to Australia, to New Zealand, and also, I'm told, to Fiji at the same time to try and kind of make the most of his time in that region. My understanding is it will still be going ahead. It'll be greatly truncated, probably a couple of days in Australia, maybe just limited to Sydney and Samoa. So it looks like he probably won't go to New Zealand and he's definitely not going to Fiji. But I think actually, given what he's been through this year, being diagnosed with cancer and the fact he's still undergoing treatment and will do presumably for another few months, I think it's quite remarkable at all that he's undertaking a journey like that. Well, one could argue that truncating a trip to that distance because it actually be more exhausting. It's, you know, if you're sort of like fitting in more dates and getting it done quicker and... Oh, well, I, I remember years ago, um, I, was, I was pregnant and going to Australia with Prince William for five days. And I was very early stages and hadn't told anyone yet. And I, so I know travelling all the way out there and all the way back for five days is, is exhausting. You're a bloody um. soldier, Rebecca English. <laughs> Never let it be not said. Well, there'll be lots more to talk about, including Prince William, Taylor Swift and a certain couple's rosé wine. Before all that, just a couple of the three and a half thousand comments you left on last week's show. Thank you very much. First up, Pamela Crowell had a message about another unsung member of the royal family. Not only is Princess Royal Anne wonderful, we must highlight her husband, Tim Lawrence. He's always with her in the background, always has a smile on his face and a wonderful representation for the royal family. He occasionally shows up on his own representing the king and does a magnificent job. He's a great strength and stay for Anne and often overlooked while looking on. Well, consider him noted by this show at least with his little ice cooler to go into the hospital. We love him. Also, lots of you wrote in about the controversy over the clashing timing between Catherine's announcement that she would be at Trooping the Colour and Meghan's about her new jam and dog biscuits. 
Shindy Adams smelled conspiracy and, and writes, if you four sitting there think Megan didn't approve the date and time of the release of her chappy jam, you're all kidding yourselves. Well, we think she means crappy jam there. I'm just, I was say, what? don't shoot the messenger. Uh, while Sheila Graham says, let's be honest, this jam and dog biscuits thing is further indicative of how irrelevant the Sussexes are. And it doesn't do Nutshell Street cred much good either. Oh dear. And Gina Maria Mascarenas sent her best wishes to the Prince of Wales, wishing Prince William a very happy birthday and a wonderful day and a great year ahead. Well, Gina and other fans of William will want to stick around to see the montage a bit later on in the show. We'll stick with Prince William now, who, along with most of the UK, it seems, including me, was spotted at the Taylor Swift concert. Rebecca, tell us more. Why, why was he there? Am I the only person who didn't go to this <laughs> concert? I think you might have been, yes. <laughs> Um, so I had an inkling again on Friday night he was going and I messaged someone and said is William at the um, Taylor Swift concert and uh, I got a message back going well we wouldn't guide on his private time and I was thinking he's there he's <laughs> definitely there with the kids and uh, we didn't have confirmation until officially till the, the next morning when the Royal Correspondents received a message saying you might want to keep an eye out on social media, there will be a picture. And lo and behold, there was a brilliant selfie of William with George, Charlotte and uh, Taylor Swift and her, her beau, Travis Kelsey, yes. if I pronounced that right, yes. which you explained to me was a very, very big deal. Well, I think it was, it was quite a big step for her to put him in such a, 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 you know, a photo that was definitely going to go global. Now, this selfie with Taylor Richard, shot with the royals it, it did have that spontaneous feel to it but something tells me about what i know about camp taylor as well that it probably wasn't that straightforward was it no i'm sure it, it yeah. took lots of organization i think you know it was taylor swift who had invited um prince william and his his children to attend her concert remember they, they do know each other that um taylor swift had had sung at a charity concert at Kenston Palace about 10 years and ago. And dragged William on stage with uh, Yes, yeah, so yeah. that didn't happen last Friday. And no. Uh, no William <laughs> on stage. Although we did see some great dad dancing, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure the, um, yeah, this selfie that was put on social media would have taken a bit of organisation. And there were things like, actually, the outfit she was wearing in the picture was quite demure. You know, it was a sort of um, jacket rather than you know, a more outrageous stage costume. It was over, I know those costumes very well. I am a Swifty. It was over a very skimpy leotard and boots. That's what I mean. Yeah. So the fact she was wearing the jacket probably suggests she knows that generally their, um, you know, social media is quite, quite modest. So that, that again would suggest a, a bit of organisation. And we did get more of an account of what happened from Taylor's boyfriend, Tra Travis, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah, this was um, yeah, quite a relaxed account of their encounter and I think before he was um, certainly not very interested in royalty or anything like that, but he, he made the point in a podcast with his brother Jason that he was, he, he was actually quite sort of um, too nervous to speak and he put his beer down, you know. And <laughs> well, that is serious. <laughs> and talk, and talked about your royal highness. Um, described um, William in some colourful language that I won't repeat on the family programme. Um, but, but anyway, he, he seemed to be impressed. And I think there is that kind of aura of royalty that um, seems to impress and um, Travis. Sorry, I was going to say, he effectively said William was a very cool dad. And he also said, didn't he, I thought it was really sweet that he was really impressed with Princess Charlotte. He basically thought she was a little firecracker, was asking lots of questions. Um, and was really, really taken by her, which I thought was lovely. I, I think I suspect that um, it might be Princess Charlotte, who's the big Taylor Swift fan in the yeah. family. Indeed. Well, well the, the smiles face. on their faces, oh, they really must have had the best night. And they've not yeah. had the easiest year, have yeah. they? You know, everything they've gone through with their mother and their grandfather. Um, and it does remind me of the days that Princess Diana used to take William and Harry to concerts. You know, that was quite kind of revolutionary at the time and I think it's it's nice that you know William is doing that and I think he would have got a lot of cool dad points for um, taking them to something like that. Yeah it's a shame that Catherine didn't go with them but she stayed behind to look after Louis who's yeah. probably a, a bit young really for Oh I don't concert. know I would have loved to see Louis dancing at that concert. <laughs> he would have had a great he? time. He would have been Do you know doing what? his little. <laughs> three hours, it, three and a half hours I think and the atmosphere is just if, if you need cheering up go to a Taylor Swift concert. Oh, I'm sure they'll take Louie next, next time Taylor's over. Indeed. Well, she's doing more dates at Wembley soon. Can't wait. Now, 
You've been up to mischief again, Richard Eden. You've written about William's friendship with Taylor and compared it to celebrity friendships of his brother across the pond. <laughs> I was just making the point in my article for Mel Plus and the newsletter that it's a very different relationship because essentially Taylor Swift's here and she wants to you know, show her respect for the royal family and in a way you could say sort of paying court to, um, to um, Prince William. Whereas with Harry and Meghan, I, I think it's the other way around, that they're the ones that always seem to be sucking up to the Hollywood royalty. You know, they thought, I think, when they move to California, we'll be at the centre of this kind of royal course and everyone will be, at, you know, coming to see us. But it never seems to be working out like that. You often see them at concerts or... I remember we've actually seen them when they met Beyonce and Jay-Z and it was a, a, a Disney premiere. And they were using the occasion to suck up to these big wigs trying to get work for Meghan. Well, I will say that uh, William certainly looked like he was having more of a whale of a time at Taylor than Harry looked when he went to Beyonce. Doesn't, don't, <laughs> that, do you remember? That is definitely true, but um, people do say it's, it's a bit unfair that you can see other pictures of uh, Harry where he was having um, a jolly time. So okay, um, it, was, it was just one, one picture. <laughs> but while we're on the subject, Rebecca... It is noticeable, isn't it, that William's friendships are unlike those of his brother or even his father. Yeah, I mean, so William has a very close-knit circle of friends. They're, they're all, you know, kind of landed gentry types, you know, the kind of the North, as they were once described, the Norfolk turnip toffs. But they are very close-knit and very loyal, and it's very difficult to get genuine stories out of this group of people oh, because they are, been trying for 20 years. <laughs> they are they are very discreet and very protective and I think when he does these celebrity moments I think what he what's interesting is he he does it and you know they knew that selfie would break the internet in fact I even joked with you know someone in his team I said like how many times can you break the internet in one week <laughs> this is the third time you've done it um uh, so I think he does it, but then he doesn't kind of labour it, and I think that's the difference. He he does it, makes the point that the kids were here, you know. It's Taylor's everyone, you know, in London. Everyone's talking about it. It's a bit of fun, and then we'll just go back off to the rest of our normal lives. He doesn't seem to want to kind of squeeze any more out of it, which I think goes back to the point that you were making about Harry and Meghan, and it did make me think of that moment in their Netflix documentary when they were sitting at a desk together, do you remember? And then kind of Harry goes, oh, surprise, she's got a text message. Oh, it's off Beyonce with this kind of terrible hammy acting. And, you know, she goes, oh, well, I might just read it out. It says how wonderful I am, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, which to me was one of the standout cringe moments of that documentary. And I, I, I did think how differently William handled that kind of, that star moment on Friday night. So Richard, to a piece you wrote at the weekend now, and there's plans for another new product coming out of Montecito. Yes, we're obviously fascinated to see what's going on there. With um, This is Megan's lifestyle brand, American Riviera Orchard. Um, and with um, the show business writer, um, Alison Boshoff, we dug into it, tried to find out exactly what's going on. And obviously on this programme, we've talked about the jam, the strawberry jam, the raspberry jam, the dog biscuits. But it looks like the actual first product is much more likely to be um, a bottle of wine that may feature in you know, the first episode of um, her cookery programme. Right. And it's a very popular thing to do. Loads of celebrities have wines, you know, and they're often very successful, like um, you know, Kylie Minogue, the singer, for example. Um, and we know that Meghan has favourite wines in the past. There's a particular rosé, and in fact, her... Um, her old blog, The Tig, was based on the name of her f favourite wine, I think. Tigonello, right, was, wasn't yeah. it? One of those. Okay, yeah. So it's that sort of thing that's much more likely. Um, the question is, would people want to drink a wine that's, you know, been sipped by Megan in her programme? It remains to be seen. Wow, well, you know, maybe they're just like me and not really fussy when it comes to wine. <laughs> Wine's great. <laughs> I think, yeah, maybe if the, if the wine's nice, people will, will buy it. <laughs> It'd be a bit of taste for you, though, right? <laughs> uh, we should do a sampling on here. We I should would do love that. We should do a live that. sampling, shouldn't we, if it happens? I would love that. Let's get right, it in now. Right, it's a deal. Yeah. It's done. Now, Rebecca, just back to William quickly, who actually, on the day of the Taylor Swift concert that he attended, turned 42. It was his 42nd birthday, and we had a wonderful picture to mark that occasion, didn't we? How lovely was that picture? I thought it was really... 
Fantastic. And again, I think the palace are making a point of putting out a picture taken by Catherine after all the discussions we had about photoshopping and earlier on this year. You know, they're just making the point, I think, that she does take the best photographs of her family and lessons have been learned from what happened and, you know, people are moving on. And I think what was, was a really nice touch is obviously the previous week for Father's Day, we'd seen a photograph of the back of William and his children. And this was, this was the front and them just leaping for joy on the sands at Holcombe Beach in Norfolk, which is, you know, a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. If you've, if you've never been, it, you know, it's a, it's a definite wish list place to go. And then jumping over the dunes in just a really happy, joyful way. Um, I defy anyone not to look at that picture and smile. Can I'll you imagine how many takes that photograph must well, have true. taken <laughs> to get them all smiling, leaping through the air at the same time? Anyone who's tried to take a picture of someone jumping off a, you know, a board at, next to the, the swimming pool or something will know how difficult it is. Indeed. Especially with multiple children <laughs> and trying to all get them smile at one, at one time. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Now, Richard, there was a piece about William written by one of your colleagues, Richard Kay, suggesting that all the struggles that the family have faced have only made William stronger. Yeah, I mean, essentially it was about William's Annas Horribilis, you know, just having to cope with the cancer of his father and his wife at the same time. Mm. Obviously that's been, would test anyone. But the point that Richard was making as well was that one thing it has done, which is very positive, is, is drawn him closer to his father. Um, you know, they've had difficult times over the years. They've not always seen eye to eye, but, but it has, um, according to Richard, has definitely drawn them together. So that, that's been to the strength of the monarchy. Mm. And this definitely piqued my interest, Rebecca. There was a line in there about Andrew that not many people will know, saying that uh, he's part, part of the reason for William's frustration with him is that he feels Andrew wasn't very welcoming to Catherine in the beginning of their relationship. Yeah, I mean, I hadn't heard that, but Richard has excellent sources, so he's obviously heard, you know, something different. I mean, in some ways I can imagine it because of having dealt, had dealings with Andrew myself over the years, you know, he's, he's quite pompous and I can imagine him Hierarchical, really, shall we say? Yeah, wanting to take massive notice for some, for, of someone until they are worthy or, or he needs to take notice of them. So I, I could see that happening. I mean, whether William bears a massive grudge about that, I'm not sure because I think he's got other things to, to, to worry about. and. You know, as we know, Andrew hasn't covered himself in glory over the over the years. Um, uh, but uh, I think it was a very interesting take on it, not one I'd heard before. Indeed. Well, fascinating stuff. And we will stick with William now because to mark his 42nd birthday, we put together 42 of our favourite pictures of our future king. Well, a belated happy birthday to the Prince of Wales from all of us here at Palace Confidential. A reminder to please do like and subscribe if you don't already. Big thanks to Richard, Rebecca and to you for watching and we'll see you next week. Bye bye.